Hey guys, we're going to be comparing different types of differentials. Now, if you think about differentials, they're pretty cool devices and they have quite a few jobs. One, they have to transmit power from the drive shaft or the transmission to the driving wheels. And at the same time, when the vehicle corners, whether it be in a parking lot or taking a corner on the highway, it has to allow the wheels to spin at different speeds. Now, when we encounter wheel slippage, we need traction aid devices. So the cool thing about traction aid devices are they can get through rough terrain, slippery conditions, or just having fun. Now it's always good to know the limitations of your traction device because then that's going to help you decide what is best for your driving style and the application you're actually going to be using the vehicle. But what happens when you put these devices into a scenario where they have to transmit as much torque over to the wheel of traction? Now the good thing about today's video for two of the trucks, they're both diesels. They're both four-wheel drive. They both have the same wheel base. They also have the same type of tire and same tire diameter. And just so you guys know, you can see that the angle that we're dealing with is about 10 degrees. The goal of today's video is to demonstrate what you commonly see equipped on factory vehicles and how good their lockup capabilities are. For our simulated ice test, same thing for all the trucks. We're gonna spray down the steel completely. And we're also giving the tire a coat as well. The lubricant we're putting on the steel is Crown Rust Protection. Now, I don't recommend you guys do this on your tires. Uh, this can be very hard on rubber. Uh, we're doing this for testing sake so you guys don't have to. Okay, up first we're going to test out our Dodge Ram 3500. So let's go ahead and test our Chevy 1500. Now this one does not have the Eden G80 in it anymore. It has a Yukon Gear Dur Grip. So the Dur Grip is a good blend for off-road and street, mainly for street use. Now we do have videos of this truck off-road. It does work really well on gravel roads just fine, and it works really well in the wet, but let's see how it does in a situation like this.
Okay, let's give our Chevy 3500 a test now. Okay, go for it. Okay, go for it. So we saw there, now it's possible from our last test there might be a little bit of engagement going on still from the G80. I used to have that on mine sometimes like after lock up I'd have to drive it around for a bit for it to, for it to engage. But we saw like still a little bit of slippage going on on the steel but it was able to just walk right up pretty easily. So in my opinion the clutch based style of limited slip it's still great because it has preload, it's good for the street and the wet. Uh, it's good for you know vehicles that are maybe on the track because they are tunable. Now the downside is you have to rebuild them, but we can make them more aggressive if we decide to. Now ones like this one that are gear driven like a Helical or a Torsen, um, probably better for off-road situations because it is kind of nice that one wheel can spin at a different speed another might track a little bit better in the snow. You also have to factor in that Hummer, the original Humvees, they came with Torsen's front and rear. Uh, this one isn't specifically a Torsen, but it's a good comparison though. Now, for those of you that find yourselves in a lot of off-road situations, an automatic locking differential, air locker, mechanical, or electronic locker is probably going to be the best use of a device for you because of its ability to transfer that torque 50-50. Alright guys, after comparing these three, which one would you run in your vehicle or which would you prefer?